Seb Dance, MEP. Yesterday, the House of Commons voted against two House of Lords amendments. The first one concerned the rights of EU residents who are currently living in the UK. What do you think about the House of Commons stance on this amendment? I think it's disgraceful. Uh, because if we ruled in now the rights of EU residents living in the UK, sorry, EU 27 residents living in the UK, then of course we get the same guarantee back. That's been said by every single person I talk to here, every single MEP, every single Commission official, every single official from member state governments. They all say the same thing. And I find it somewhat absurd that the governments say that that's what they want to do. In fact, they use the word priority. Well, I don't know what a priority is if you don't unilaterally act now, which is totally within our gift, in order to secure the rights for UK citizens as well. It seems to me to be absolutely disgraceful. Are these people going to inevitably become, be in a sort of limbo and be bargaining chips for the next 18 months? Well, yes, that's in effect what the government has said they will be. I was watching an interview earlier uh, with Owen Paterson and he said, of course we want to uh, ensure their rights. And then he was challenged and, and, and asked, well, why don't you? And he said, well, we can't now because, of course, we need to, to keep that uh, for the negotiations. I mean, what's that if not treating people as bargaining chips? These are people with lives and careers and jobs and families. They're our friends, colleagues, neighbours. Uh, it's astonishing that we could treat three million people living on our shores in that way, not to speak, of course, of the millions of British citizens who are living elsewhere in the EU. This whole thing is just astonishing. The House of Lords also requested a meaningful vote, a vote where it wouldn't just be a choice between what was negotiated and the cliff edge, it would be sticking to what we already have. Again, that's been rejected. Uh, Parliament is sovereign, they have the right to reject this, but do you think that that is a right decision given that we don't know the outcome of these negotiations? It significantly binds Parliament's hand when it comes to the end of the negotiation process. It limits the options available uh, and in, in effect it gives the government carte blanche to do what they like. Now the white paper that the government released is fantastical in my view. It contains so many contradictions, so many things that don't make sense. We want aspects of the single market and when you total them all up, they look like the single market. But then the government says we can't possibly be in the single market or the customs union because it, it, it includes uh, accepting the judgments of supranational courts. So quite how they square the circle, I don't know. I don't think it's possible. And I worry very, very strongly that there are many of those in the government who actively now want no deal. They actively seek no deal as the ultimate aim in order to then blame the EU for its intransigence. It's quite clear there's a club here with members and that club provides benefits. If somebody leaves that club, fine, but it's up to the club members to then decide what benefits are available to those outside the club and at what cost. To then blame them for not giving everything we have currently when we make the decision to leave is pure lunacy. And I, I am very worried that that's the direction the government's going in. At that point, Parliament will say, why on earth didn't we retain the option to do something about this? You're an MEP, you will be an MEP when the European Parliament are discussing this. Uh, what red lines do you think the Parliament as a whole put down? Well, they've said all along that the four freedoms that go with the regulations on the single market and customs union are indivisible. Um, I've no doubt that the government may attempt at some point to try and pick those apart, but that's not going to happen. Everyone we speak to here makes that abundantly clear. Uh, and. They will be very clear also, of course, on the rights of citizens, both EU27 citizens in the UK and UK citizens in the EU27. But that's one of the issues, as I said before, that people here want to get over and done with. They don't want this hanging over the negotiations like a sword of Damocles, if you like, over people's lives and over their uh, jobs. So that's one of the things that will want to be sorted out very quickly, as of course inevitably will be the cost of leaving, because we've signed up to a number of commitments. Uh, budgets are set not day by day, of course, but years and years in advance, and commitments are made. Uh, and the figures that will be discussed are, of course, in order for uh, the UK to meet its existing commitments. That will be a big issue to discuss right at the outset. Uh, and it's unwise and irresponsible for the government to be promoting this idea that it's a bill or a punishment to, uh, cost or whatever it is they're saying. This is about meeting our existing commitments and that will be a big issue.